What's up guys? Hopefully everybody's doing well. If you're here for the Siemens TIA Portal Basic Programming Tutorials, you come to the right spot. I finally finished off an online course on the Siemens TIA using the, C the S7-1200 PLC. And let me walk you through the environment here and show you what you get when you purchase the course. So obviously there's, uh, there's 24 hours of uh, videos, so just an immense amount of videos available within the course. Uh, and we walk you from the basics to all the way to sequential programming and PID controls. So we have a capstone project here where we do uh, the factory IO assembler scene. Uh, and I walk you through step by step how to get that guy to work in both manual and automatic mode. And keeping track of every step that you are uh, within that sequence there. And then in PIDs, we go through um, how to set up PID controls and then how to tune the, the circuit. And we're using the factory IO level uh, tank environment there. All right, so let me start off here at the top. Um, so first thing is that you get the videos, but you also get three different textbooks as well. Uh, so you get 367 pages of all the notes from the course. So oftentimes on the end of a video, you'll say, um, can I have a copy of what you just did? Uh, or can I have a copy of the, uh, of the program that you just completed? Copies of the program are embedded within the, uh, the course. And then every step that I've done is detailed throughout the, uh, the, pro the textbook here. So if you're trying to configure a new uh, Siemens PLC program in TIA portal, every step along the way is detailed with arrows showing you exactly where to go with every step for both uh, a physical PLC or if you're using PLC SIM as well, right? So everything is there. Um, if you're working on uh, timers or there we go. So there's our timers. So it gives you the, the details on everything about the, uh, the timer, right? So all the different components of the timer, uh, basics on everything about that unit. And then for each one, we'll always have the timing diagra diagrams or the counter diagrams, uh, parameters, and then we'll walk through a basic uh, program showing you how that component actually works. And then we'll go from there and we'll go into uh, something like sequential timers. So um, oftentimes you'll see that a lot of the videos that most of us have created are just the basics, like here's the timer, here's the counter. Uh, but we need example programs. So there's a number of different example programs for every different instruction that's available in TIA. Okay, from timers to counters to the move uh, to positive pulses, um, anything that you guys need are available right here. Math functions, right? So every different math function is there. And I've tried to create uh, videos that are um, that are more interactive where we make use of uh, both the factory IO environment and an HMI as well. So you've got your PLC uh, manual here, 360 page, seven pages of everything that you guys need. And then we're gonna make use of factory IO as well. So there's also an exercise manual for factory IO. 122 pages, uh, going through the basics on how to set up your drivers through to uh, how are we doing the, the tank level project and setting up all of our components in order and all of our IO there as well, right? And then finally, we're using uh, the level control for PIDs. So here we've got every step here in order to create the scene, have it working with your TA portal, and then specific addresses that are that are there on the control panel, and then how to use the PID algorithm within uh, TIA in order to get the level to get to exactly the level that you're looking for. So we have a manual on the TIA, factor IO, and then there's also a manual on using the HMI. So 70 pages here on setting up your HMI, right? So all the steps in order to download your specific IP address and everything for your HMI, getting everything rocking and rolling, uh, and then creating certain programs like this, uh, this pump alternator. So we're gonna create an environment on the HMI where we've got some animations and it ties into our PLC program on the side there. So you'll be able to control uh, your PLC program either through the HMI or through PLC SIM. So we got 24 hours of video content, three textbooks, and for every topic that's discussed within the textbook, uh, there'll always be a number of different programs that you'll have to complete in order to move on to uh, the next point. So lots of example programs to build up your knowledge uh, from the basics 
to the, the more advanced sequential and PID controls. All right, guys, I'll stop talking here and I'll, I'll finish off with a couple uh, example videos of what you'll find in the course. Uh, and if you find that this is something that you're interested, then please sign up with the link below and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks very much, guys. Talk to you soon. Okay, so we just switched into automatic mode. I'm going to hit the start push button and everything should start off. So it moves forward, both the, the base and the clamp, base and the top or the lid are clamped. Brings it over, lets it go, lifts it up, and then moves forward until that part leaving the fuse sensor is tripped. But now we can see that we are exactly at our 50% at 150, and the appropriate indicator light has turned on. Okay, let's try the 75%. Hopefully it will stop exactly at 75, which is 225 in the tank. At the 75, I'm now opening up the fill valve. I'm now sending a value of 7.2 below to my MD100. Let's reset this guy. And now we'll show that going up to 10 will be the maximum that I can do. Okay. So let's hit the, the push button for a start. Yellow light turns on for four seconds. Everything starts up. And now let's see this stop light, whether it comes in. Oh, very nice. Oh yeah. That's cool, eh? Love this simulation. So hitting the start push button now. I momentarily hit the start push button. And we can see that this is now timing out to four seconds, five seconds. And the green light is set and it's solid. Okay, getting close to the 12 seconds. Now the next one sets and the yellow light is now flashing because we have that clock one hertz in front of there. Okay, hopefully everybody's cool. Looking at the, the physical way that we're going to wire this in, it's gonna look like this, guys. Okay, so looking at this diagram here, we've got the positive from our 24 volt power supply going to this bus. So think of this as a parallel feed to all of our different switches. Once the water drains out, then flow switch one would open and pump one would turn off. Okay, so pump one is now off. Beautiful. We can see here though, but that the alternating relay percent M0.0 .0 is true. So that means that this is true. And if pump one is uh, off and the pump two overload hasn't been tripped, then next time that float switch one closes, let's turn on pump number two. So let's do that now. Float switch one will now close and pump two turns on. 